sensing various signals is important to making things work in our day-to-day -day lives, from sensing whether you should pick up your phone, to sensing the temperature so you don't put on a ski jacket only to step outside to 80 degree weather. Sensors come in all shapes and sizes, some can be quite large like the kilometer long interferometers used to detect gravitational waves, and we also have sensors that are only a few millimeters in length that are put into our phone. But is it possible to make sensors that are only a few nanometers or even a single molecule in length? The answer is yes, with a type of nanotechnology called self-assembled monolayers, or SAMs for short, which are, as the name suggests, a single layer of molecules that pack and grow by itself. These monolayers are used in a wide variety of applications and not only sensing, such as changing the hydrophobicity of a surface, like coating your windshield on your car so rainwater is repelled, where the higher contact angle means more hydrophobic. Another application could be to making surfaces more biocompatible, such as coating them with protein so that it encourages cells to attach, which allow researchers to control exactly how cell cultures grow. Self-assembled monolayers can be constructed with many different types of molecules, and they usually consist of a head group, which is used to bind a substrate, a tail group for tight packing and presenting the functional groups, and a functional group at the end that determines what kinds of applications you want to use the SAM for. More specifically, common adsorbates which serve as the head of the SAM are thiols, which commonly bind to metallic or semiconductor substrates, such as gold, silver, or platinum, while carboxylic acids or amines are used to bind to oxide layers. The tail groups are usually long hydrocarbon chains, which extend and present the functional groups. The hydrocarbon chains also serve a dual purpose, where van der Waal forces between the chains cause the chain to self-align and pack very tightly together to help form the monolayer. A very common SAM is using thiols to bind to gold, which form a semicovalent bond with a strength of 45 kcals per mole, while the van der Waal forces between the hydrocarbon chains are 1.75 kcals per mole. Now, how do these molecules get patterned and assembled? Well, there are multiple ways to, to help form these SAMs. For example, the molecules can be dispersed in a solvent, loaded into a reservoir, and then written using Dipren nanolithography onto a substrate. Once the solution, solution is on the substrate, the molecules will then self-align. The solution can also be casted on a PDMS mold and stamped directly onto the substrate using a technique called microcontact printing or SAMs can even be formed using vapor deposition techniques. In order to control the formation of SAMs, we have to look at the kinetics of SAM formation, where SAM formation is generally understood to have two major steps. One, absorption of the molecule onto the surface, and two, monolayer formation. With absorption, depending on the technique used to pattern and assemble the monolayers, absorption is largely dictated by diffusion and convection. Parameters that researchers need to adjust for are proportional to the surface area that they are trying to cover, where they change things like the amount of time the solution comes into contact with the substrate, or concentrations of the solution. A simplified equation can be used to model the kinetics of, of absorption using the Langmuir kinetic model where the theta is the area of the position and k is the rate constant. The second step of the process for SAM formation is self-organization, which is split into three steps. One, a low density phase where the molecules are randomly scattered as, and as its name suggests, at a low density. Two, an intermediate density phase where some molecules are absorbed onto the surface of the substrate but are in random conformation, some lying flat while others standing straight. And lastly, the high density phase where molecules are standing normal to the substrate and are tightly packed together. Now for the fun part. Sensing applications of SAMs. We'll start with a very commonly used thiol bound to the gold substrate with long, tightly packed hydrocarbons, and by changing the functional group at the very end, you can change your application. For example, by adding methyl groups to the end of the chains, you can create incredibly hydrophobic regions which attract molecules such as laminin, which is an extracellular matrix protein. This protein helps, helps cells bind to the substrate better, and you can imagine using this to sense various biological cells, such as bacteria. If you were to take the same substrate and head groups, but instead of attaching hydrocarbons, researchers have been able to attach single-stranded DNA, which is used to detect and sense the complementary DNA strands, which is often very useful for DNA assays where chronoculometry is used to monitor the binding and unbinding of single-stranded DNA. 
Another type of sensor that you can use with these SAMs is attaching a molecule called form captopyridine which undergoes protonation at a higher pH. This sensor works because with all SAMs there exists an interfacial capacitance. When the pyridine group protonates at higher pH, the dielectric constant of the monolayer actually decreases, which means you have a lower capacitance, which then can be measured, ultimately translating a change in pH to a change in measurable capacitance. And finally, another sensor that can be created using SAMs is a metal cation sensor, where researchers have attached amide groups to the end of SAMs to detect the binding of metal cations such as copper, cobalt, or even lead. And there are just so many more applications with tons of combinations of head groups, tails, and functional groups. It all just depends on what your application is.